Hello there. Welcome back to the Agostino Zinger Show with me, your host, Agostino Zinger. How are you doing? How are you feeling? Great. Amazing. How am I? Brilliant. Couldn't be better. Now, usually I don't record, you know, reaction videos. I try and let the news sit for a bit so I can kind of formulate my, you know, impression on what's actually going on. Because I think sometimes jumping, you know, out the window with your opinion or your take can sometimes land you in hot water or, you know, sometimes you don't have all the information to hand and you need to sort of, you know, rest on it and kind of gather your thoughts. But as the majority of the story is out already, and this is just more so about, you know, how um, the, this person tends to, how this person, you know, aims to kind of recover or kind of figure out what to do on the other side i thought why not do a, re a reaction video now and if you're wondering why it is it's regarding brian callen one half of the fire and a kid who was accused of sexual assault and misconduct on a friday morning he's had a pretty shitty weekend by all accounts and he came out firing you know even in the article he did lend some comments um pushing back at some of the claims that some of the women who said they had some not so ple pleasurable experiences hanging out with him and yeah we've all been speculating as to what's going to be happening next if this is a a sort of litmus test for other cases that are going to be coming out concerning some people in the LA comedy scene whether it's just an isolated incident considering you know brian callen is somebody who him, he himself would probably be he wouldn't be um he wouldn't feel um hard done by if someone was accusing him of being a little bit of a sex pest right so we're not too sure if it's going to be something that's going to affect the whole comedy scene of just an isolated incident isolated incident or isolated kind of um takedown of one brian kellen so he did tell us over the weekend that he was going to record a special edition of the fire and the kid podcast for what this weekend right the sunday or the friday or the, the sunday or the saturday night that never materialized which i was i kind of half expected i didn't think anyone i think whatever friends he has left were definitely on the phone to him and told him to kind of pull back from that i think reacting straight away especially when you've been accused of something so serious and so heinous you probably owe it to yourself to your fans not you probably owe it to yourself and your family forget your fans to really take some time to work out what you want to say how you're going to defend yourself because this isn't some play play thing do you know what i mean like he's been accused of rape and you know it doesn't get much worse than this especially if you're a public figure it's the sort of stink or it's the sort of smudge that you can never usually shake off so if he wants to stand up from some the best thing that he can do is take some time away pull back and maybe formulate a response but um he obviously felt as if that he had to kind of jump on it and kind of get ahead it as much as he could and he has just released a video response now a sort of video response statement to his fans or just to the public in general addressing um the allegations somewhat and kind of offering his opinion on it so we're gonna watch it now together and i'm gonna give you my reaction as we go along if you haven't watched it in full, then I do recommend you watch it in full because I'm going to be stopping it a few times. So do not get mad at me whilst I try and formulate my opinions. I watch along with yo. So here's up on the screen. It's available now on his um, Instagram account. Check it out. But let's play and see what he has to say. Hey, everybody. Brian Callen here. You know, when you're in a situation like I am, uh, you get a lot of advice. from. First things first, the lids look a lot better, right? Since they've healed. But considering everything that's occurred getting eyelid surgery off the back of you know did, did he get the surgery before they left to san antonio or was it after regardless in context it just looks terrible in it but hey a lot of different people and it usually falls into two different categories either they tell you to post a statement and disappear or they say lay low and let the news cycle pass you by probably two bits of really terrible advice i think in hollywood i never understood that um, post a statement and, and kind of duck that doesn't make any sense if you've been accused of rape ducking and coming back isn't gonna you know stop people from asking questions or if anything the worst thing that i think for the celebrities it seems like or especially yeah people that work in hollywood the issue that they have isn't that someone accuses you of a heinous crime it's that usually when somebody accuses you of a heinous crime whether or not it's true or false the industry panics and just basically and they cancel you and the industry cancel you so they they kind of you know if you had a development deal they pull that if you were due to appear in some movie they they write you out of the role they essentially take away all your you know um up and coming job prospects or up and coming job opportunities 
which then affect anything you might have got in the future as well because no one wants to work with you because you know they're assuming that you still haven't addressed this elephant in the room which is this rape claim or sexual misconduct or whatever it may be so just posting a statement and running doesn't work waiting until the new cycle the new cycle sort of like you know washes you out isn't a good idea either because again if you've been accused of rape you probably need to address that you know head on you probably need to you know you're probably going to need to defend yourself in court wherever it may be so just hoping the new cycle kind of you know makes people forget isn't a good idea you need to really attack it head on with i don't know some sort of weighty response or some sort of evidence i don't know what it is but hey let's carry on well for better or for worse i'm not doing any of that i never thought in a million years that i'd be sitting here defending myself against something i did not do 21 years ago um not too sure about that mate actions speak louder than words right when chris gets accused chris Lee gets accused of you know soliciting what news from underage girls was was it right and generally being a bit of a creep brian cannon did go out of his way to distance himself hard from chris D'Elia. and at the time i think a lot of people were thinking this is a bit weird right coupled with brendan sobbing like a baby next to him it just didn't seem it seemed like a strange response when if when your friend that you know is a bit of a sex pest anyway right you know he, got, he gets a lot of girls so if anything you'd imagine most guys who are a bit who are sexually pers promiscuous would be in the back of their heads thinking, hmm, have, has there ever been an occasion where I've kind of overset the mark? So you, it wouldn't be, you know, or your friends would have an idea of who you are as a person too, right? It's not going to be a, a complete shock, right? Chris D'Elia was, wasn't a saint in that regard. Um, we all kind of knew, you know, he was a man about town. He got the ladies. So when they reacted that way, it kind of made you think, these guys are hiding something, right? Either that or they're just trying to protect their own careers, which is even worse, you know, considering they're friends. So for him to never in his wildest dreams think he'd have to do such a thing, make a statement, I don't know about that. So this is me saying that I categorically and absolutely deny all the allegations against me. I wanted you to see me say that. I didn't want to post some... Fair. You categorically deny everything. And again, I don't know what imagine we live in a world right because i i don't like to think that i don't like to think that there's people that out there that would make up such a you know such a allegation just to bring somebody down because you know for the most part if you're going to test i don't know because brian cannon's not the if you're going to bring somebody down like an hollywood elite right you would go you'd maybe you know um no disrespect meant towards this at all but you'd probably aim somewhere higher right brian cullen wouldn't be the most glitziest person to go and aim at in terms of taking down the hollywood elites um unless of course you're trying to take down you know joe rogan at the same time but i don't know man like i i, I don't like to i don't want to believe that there's women out there that are going to make up you know such serious allegations to tear a dude down because i don't know they didn't have a good encounter with him i don't like to think that's true but if it is true what's the punishment for the ladies that you know put their those statements out and corroborate them with their friends and stuff or do they just miss me remember it i don't know because I, I would love to figure out i'd love to try and think about how this works out in brian's favor really i don't, I don't know how it does like how can you disprove um these statements when they've kind of been corroborated in some sense don't get me wrong you know just your friends remembering you telling them the story doesn't mean it's true but you'd assume this is just phase one of the stories that are leaking, right? There's usually always kind of a there's usually a bit of a groundswell in the background when these stories come out. Some other people, some other you know parties get maybe you know they get a bit confident because they see these stories out in the press and it becomes a little bit of a pile on, you know, for lack of a better term. Stale statement. I wanted you to hear that come out of my mouth. I have been characterized as someone that no one. No one who knows me, not my friends, not my family, not my fans, would ever recognize. And that's because... I don't know, man. What, what say you, fighting the Kid fans? Do you think any of these allegations, when you heard them, were they really um, left of centre? Did they really kind of surprise you? Were you kind of shooken at your core? Did you fall off your chair at surprise? Like, oh, no, not Brian. I don't know, man. This is the issue, isn't it? Kind of telling... Telling us this is just nothing. It doesn't mean anything, really, isn't it? My friends and fans know that I'm not that kind of person. Yeah, we do, right? Imagine your friends, your friends and family do. Okay, we do, mate. But you don't. That's not who you have to convince. You have to convince all the other lot out there who don't really like you, and that's the issue. How do you convince them? That's not who I am. That is not what. I, that's not something I could do. Those are things not never the things that I could. I couldn't do. Those are not things that I would ever do. That is not how I have ever lived my life. And if we want to take a bit of a an analysis on the setting and the background, you know, 
as most of you are aware, Brian is recently divorced, um, living single post COVID. Um, you know, he was on death's door by all accounts and now he's been hit with these sexual assault allegations. He's filming the video, he's back to his staircase that leads up to a room I'm assuming somewhere, but it looks quite lonely, right? It looks like a lonely, um, time for him at the moment and i guess that's the issue when when you look at these things that are happening with the la comedy scene right these guys are all friends and they're all pally pally when everything's rosy but the moment trouble hits and, and again don't get me wrong i'm not expecting his friends to come out and defend him you know off the back of a rape charge you know that's a bit too much but it's just funny to just from the outside to look at it and just see just how lonely this video looks and how sad it looks compared to how he is in his normal settings right none of his comedy fans have come out and posted statements they've just let amy schumer drag his name in public right and completely bury him and amy schumer is not somebody that's well liked within that community even now you know she's kind of she went a bit hollywood and turned into a what social justice warrior or uh you know a political pawn in some respects i don't really know i've not really kept too much attention on that but i would imagine most of those guys don't really like amy schumer no, no one's really defending him on that part it's just you know supposed fans have come have come up to him and or sent him some encouraging messages but just looking at the video it is a bit sad isn't it? and also think about this right brendan didn't allow him to do this on the fire and a kid platform he told him to do it what via his own social media platform why is that? And should you feel a bit aggrieved if you're Brian Cadden, that you don't get a chance to defend yourself on the biggest platform there is, your own show? And by the way, this is not, this is not a video about cancel culture. This is not a video, it's certainly not a video about the Me Too movement. Ah, so somebody had a word, in it? Because I remember in that statement that he wrote, that was... When you mentioned cancel culture, I was like, this isn't cancel culture, mate. You're being accused of rape. You know what I mean? <laughs> cancel culture is when somebody, I don't know, re retweets um, that, what was that, James James Damore uh, paper that he put together about the differences with men and women working in, you know, in, well, in tech or in computer science. That's cancel culture, right? You're retweeting an article that goes against the you know the current narrative that's cancer culture and you losing your job that's cancer culture right that can be all good we can have a good debate about that but you you know allegedly raping women isn't cancer culture whatsoever so i think someone's had a word and told him hey you need to kind of take that out of your vocab my friend and you know fair play to him for doing so i i happen to believe and it's taken me to be completely honest it's taken me a while to come to this conclusion to understand this i believe that the me too movement is one of the most important movements of my lifetime later is he trying to be an ally now <laughs> this is too late mate they don't want you <laughs> oh this is so painful man god bless brian Callum, man this is hard to watch in it really think about it being a fan of the show not not gonna lie Brian sort of like made me hate the show a lot, but I've got a lot of time for Brian. I've, sorry, Brenda's made me hate the show a lot, but I've got a lot of time for Brian, man. To see him like this, having to kowtow and, you know, um, talk up the, you know, the influence and the impact of Me Too. We know, we know Me Too's done some great work, but just because you're in the crosshairs of what, of getting your career completely taken away from you, now he's sort of trying to align himself with the very people that want to see his career absolutely in tatters. For the first time in history, it gives women recourse against the abuse of power. And that makes the world a better place. And that is not... <laughs> is that what? Is that not what they're trying to do to you? This is bizarre. <laughs> a political statement. That's just fair play. And I believe in fair play. But I also believe in due process. So he says, I categorically deny that those things happen. And now he's saying due process. What is it, sir? What is it? Is it both or is it one or the other? And we live in a very strange time where anybody can make an allegation against you and you are guilty until proven innocent. What do you think he's got evidence wise? Because he does, to be fair to him, he does seem pretty, even though he looks like he just might have cried for about an hour or two, but he, you know, in, in the bathroom and compose himself. You know, he is an actor, so I'm sure he's able to compose himself and, you know, um, get his point across in an eloquent manner without seeming too emotional. But what evidence do you think he would have to have to clear his name? Like, let's play that game. What, do, what evidence do you think? Text messages, emails, because um, even the Aziz Ansari story, right? That was always, a that was, that was kind of, for the most part, people sort of sided with Aziz in that story, right? They didn't necessarily see that that was a Me Too moment or an opportunity to cancel his career. It was mostly, from what 
I remember of the story, it just seemed like a really bad date, right? They both sort of fumbled and, you know, were clumsy and uncomfortable around each other. And it just ended a bit messy, right? But it wasn't necessarily an abuse of power in that regard, right? It didn't really fall in line or, you know, marry up with some of the other stories that you've heard. So, and that was just by us reading the account, right? We didn't necessarily get any more ex extra information from Aziz and Sari's side of things. He sort of like just apologized and ran away in that respect. So I wonder what Brian would have to do to kind of change the narrative. What can you actually do? What, would you have to sit down with the women that are alleging or with the victims of these alleged crimes and try and have some sort of civil conversation? That's never going to happen, right? Because if anything, that's, um, what's that word for it? There's a word for it when you do that. That's like victim shaming, they would say, right? They're never going to allow something like that. So I wonder what, why he's so confident. I really do. Or, or, or is he confident enough to reach out to these women privately or for a, a, you know, a middle person to get them to recount their stories or something? Who knows? It, it's just a fact that social media and the press alone can act as judge, jury, and executioner. That's true. I don't think that's good for anybody. And by the way, I don't know how to fix that. I don't know how to fix that. I, I don't think anybody in particular is even to blame. But some interesting words and phrases to use in it. No one's to blame. I categorically deny this. But I want my I want my day in court basically, right? He wants due process. Interesting phrases here he's throwing out. When something like this happens, this is pretty much the only way you can defend yourself. So this is me standing up and, and, and saying that I have been falsely accused of terrible things that I did not do. So and that's what I have to say. Thank you for listening. And I want to thank my fans for rallying around me. I, 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 it, your comments mean so much to me. And to be honest with you, this sounds a little bit like Amber Heard, right? You remember when she came out after the, en the end of the trial against Johnny Depp? And the son, you know, she came out and sort of tried to spin it and make it seem as if, the, you know, the the public was on her side. This is a bit weird because I, I don't know. I think the public is 50 50 on this one. I need him right now. Um, I, I will be taking a leave of absence obviously from my podcast um ouch uh, and uh that's that's pretty much it so thank you very much thank you for listening i appreciate it oh rinks is not looking good in it rinks is not looking good so the end bit about him taking a leave of absence for his podcast makes sense i guess in terms of trying to fix the story and get it back where it needs to be there's also the very valid reason that you know there's covid on they, those, these guys can't do shows, so Brian needs to keep that ship rolling, right? He's got expensive um, taste. Um, I'm sure his, his monthly bills are no joke, so he has to make sure he keeps that um, train running. So you're definitely going to expect to see more co-hosts, probably a lot more Mike Kafferhood and a few other maybe friends that might want... Oh, actually, you know what? Actually, thinking about it, because he, he did mention in one of the other shows recently that... Oh, is it Bert Kreischer that he's finding it hard to get guests since they were since they got a positive um, COVID test, right? Or COVID result. So imagine now, with this sort of cloud looming over the fire and the kid, how hard it's going to be to get people to sit down with him, co-host the show, and somehow not talk about his issue with his friend. Or maybe they will talk about it, who knows. But... For Brian personally, it, it must be a bit of a kick in the teeth that you can't, you know, make this statement on your own platform. I think that's probably something that will kind of hurt him in some respects. But you know, you can you can you have to understand Brendan in that regard. But it does go to show you, man, just how shallow those relationships are, isn't it? Like because part of me is like, okay, cool. If you're business partners, that's fine, isn't it? Right? Protect the brand, you know, let you do your thing, take some time out so that if you are innocent and you can prove yourself innocent, you've got something to come back to. But they're best friends, supposedly, right? Brian is kind of one way in, you know, alongside maybe Joe Rogan is sort of responsible for Brendan's career and success in stand up and in whatever in other business ventures he's got outside of the UFC, his UFC career. So it, it must be a bit of a kick in the teeth, man, to be like, well, I can't do it on my own show. No, you can't, man. You can't. You're going to fuck up the bag. Yeesh. And then defending yourself. Yeah, look, man, if he's got the evidence to disprove these stories, then fair enough. But there's there's accounts in there of him having a four-year affair with some woman. I'm sh not sure how you can you know, say that didn't happen. He's going to have to just say it did happen, and that's what probably led to his divorce. Cool. But then the other stories sound wild, right? You trying to make out of a girl in the change room of American Apparel just sounds nuts telling somebody to you know to give you a bj so they can get some stage time is nuts right 
um, allegedly pinning somebody down and you know and going for it when they've told you no 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 repeatedly is nuts so I don't know as a dude I just I'm interested to see how he can disprove those accounts but then for the women involved and the victims god damn it it's gonna get dragged out in it um as it should really I guess and if you're gonna accuse somebody or something they should have the um opportunity to defend themselves but this is probably why women don't come out more often and talk about these issues and kind of you know get them out there because it's never just of course you you know it's never just you selling telling your side you know it's it's gonna be it's gonna involve journalists you know picking apart your story people digging into your past ringing up your friends you having to retell your story again and again and again um and sometimes it could take years like look what's happened with you know not to link them at all but look what's happened with the whole jeffrey epstein and Ghislaine maxwell thing right how long did that whole entire case take to come to its you know conclusion now at the moment it took years right decades and and that's involving the higher ups right that's involving the real real players that are controlling everything that we see around us so imagine someone like a brian kellen like what resources do you have to kind of pull from who knows who knows if you believe the internet you will he'll believe that his father is going to play an instrumental role in his but i don't know man Let, let's see how he is able to um kind of fight his case i really don't know what he's got in his back pocket but he did seem pretty confident to me if anything if a blight a little bit sad um you know a bit dead behind the eyes but the lids look good that's a good thing right that's like 10 grand or whatever it was well invested but if ever there was a time where you needed your and again this isn't you know i don't know anyone's business but if ever the, if ever there was a time where you needed your family and your wife and your kids this would be it, in it but you know when you're post when you're post divorce and you've got this looming around your head i'm pretty sure your ex-wife and the wants nothing to do with you really i'd imagine so right um especially if she has a legitimate reason to hate you now post divorce as well especially if it's not an amicable one bloody hell man and then the amy schumer thing is always really cutting because she like i said in previous shows she represents the industry like she is she represents she is essentially like a walking hollywood sign right um and i'm sure a lot of other stand-up comedians will feel very nervous around her because if she's able if she's willing and ready to kind of i won't say throw him under the bus but if she's ready and willing to essentially um chastise him in public right and really go for his neck at him on his on a, on a caption and all this sort of stuff and talk about other comedians being angry at her then you know she's definitely chosen her side like she's picked her side I'm on the wood. She's like, I'm on the winning side. I'm going to stand with this this movement now at the moment. And if you're a stand up comedian and you had and you told of her in the past, <laughs> I think you're probably going to need to be sending her some flowers or bouquets or something to make sure that she doesn't <laughs> think you're the next victim. But bloody hell, man. What a mad development. Brian Callan responded. Let's see how this story works out in the end. Anyway. That was my reaction to it. Let me know what you think, what your thoughts are. Do you think Brian can rescue his career? Do you think the stories are fake? Do you think the stories are made up? Were they exaggerated? Um, what kind of punishment should be enacted for the people that, for the victims that are accusing him of crimes that didn't happen? If it's, well, if it kind of comes out that Brian Callan is guilty and he's just, you know, trying to protect his back because, you know, that's what people do when they you know when they get in even if someone's being accused of something they generally did you know you're always going to come out fighting you know if that does happen what's the what's a reasonable punishment for him and what do you think in general about him not doing it on his on the fire and the kid and having to do it on his own instagram profile is that something is there something to be said about brendan sort of pushing him to do that or was that brian deciding that he didn't want to ruin the fire and the kid um by getting on there and ranting and rambling about something like i'm doing right now let me know in the comments below what your thoughts are this has been the Agassino Zinger Show. Thanks so much for tuning in. Um, if it's your first time checking me out, so make sure you smash that like button, hit subscribe, and make sure you follow me on all my social media platforms, Instagram, Twitter, Agostino Zinger, all one word. You can find the links down below. Thanks for checking me out. Peace.